Hey, 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 all right, <laughs> man, <laughs> what's up, YouTube, how's it going? Eddie Gray here, resources for the modern creative, we're back at it with uh, In The Mix, so glad to have you guys here, there's so much going on, I uh, did a microphone review this week, been working on some music licensing deals, with some of the biggest publishers in the game, um, just got a new gig, so I'm super stoked about that, and just all around great things so just keep focusing on the positive uh you know make sure that you you stay in line and you keep moving forward no matter what now i got a gig i got a client coming here at 6 20 so my time is limited so we're going to get right into it. if you guys have any questions hit me on the comments and we will go from there so you guys know that we're reading this amazing book called still like an artist and so i'm just going to keep reading on uh, in a second here i'm going to show you a free video from my live loops course graphy currently has it on sale um and i believe you get the first chapter so the entire first chapter for free if you guys want to check that out on the graphy app now bear in mind if you are going to download this free chapter you're going to have to update to the latest operating software and the latest version of graphy in order to grab that all right so let's get into it here imitation is not flattery we want you to take from us. We want you at first to steal from us because you can't steal. You will take what we give you and you will put it in your own voice. And that's how you will find your voice. And that's how you begin. And then one day someone will steal from you. Mr. Francis Ford Coppola has got a great body of work. Let's keep reading here. At some point, you'll have to move from imitating your heroes to emulating them. Imitation is about copying. Emulation is when imitation goes one step further, breaking through into your own thing. So we want to learn how to emulate, not just copy, right? For those of you that that haven't really felt like you're an artist, perhaps you're 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 uh, dealing with the imposter syndrome, you're you're dealing with self doubt, and you're wondering if you're ever really going to be the creative that you were 
always designed to be the way that uh that you knew you were when you were you know five ten fifteen twenty whatever years old and and maybe there's just been some some hindrances some blockages maybe there's just been stuff in the way life time and so then now you, you're trying to find a new path you're trying to find a new opening and so this is your opening there isn't a move that's a new move the basketball star Kobe Bryant, may he rest in peace, has admitted that all of his moves on the court were stolen from watching tapes of his heroes, <clears throat> Michael Jordan. But initially, when Bryant stole a lot of those moves, he realized he couldn't completely pull them off because he didn't have the same body type as the guys he was thieving from. He had to adapt the moves to make them his own. Conan O'Brien has talked about how comedians try to emulate their heroes. Fall short. And end up doing their own thing. Johnny Carson tried to be Jack Benny, but he ended up being Johnny Carson. David Letterman tried to copy Johnny Carson, but ended up being David Letterman. And Conan O'Brien tried to be David Letterman, but ended up being Conan O'Brien. That's pretty fascinating. You got to love that, huh? In O'Brien's words, it is our failure to become our perceived ideal that ultimately defines us and makes us unique. Thank goodness. So I'll stop here. And again, just a word of encouragement to continue on the path. You will find your voice. It may take a year. It may take five years. It may take 15 years. But at the end of that road, at the end of that passage, you will find your artistry and uh, the illustration here real quick good theft all right emulation is about honoring studying from the greats stealing from the greats um, and also giving them credit don't just take and then that's it make sure you you pay dividends right you pay your respects and then you transform and you remix bad theft on the other hand looks something like this you're degrading it. You're, you're, you're stealing just from one person. You're trying to be a carbon copy of somebody else. You're plagiarizing, just straight up stealing without any shame. You're imitating and, of course, just ripping off. So let's stay on the left side of the cursor here, guys. Good theft. Steal Like an Artist by Mr. Austin Kleon. I, I hope I'm saying his name correctly. And uh, i just like to start that way to kind of warm up get ourselves in the zone again my name is eddie gray uh composer producer in la just having a blast uh you know i've been on this kick of of helping my fellow creatives there's a lot of people out there they want to find their own path and they perhaps just don't know how you know um it, it's possible so long as you stay consistent on the path you know that's my main thing is people you know they they, they want to get somewhere they want to they want to figure out how to do it and they're not willing to go through the rigor it's almost like they want a, a guaranteed contract and then they'll move forward and that's just not the way it works that's not how it worked for me you know i wasn't always doing this work um i was lucky enough to have the right system in place the right people at the right time and and these are very fragile and sensitive occurrences that can completely change in other words your life may look one way right now but believe me it could be a year later two months later and then everything is kind of backwards um, or just where it needs to be in order for you to realize your optimum potential your ideal self your your your, your self uh humanness as uh, you know a lot of these uh these great leaders out there talk about so we're going to uh get into the live loops course so here check this out I'm going to show you one free video here on the Live Loops course. And this one, I believe, is called Triggering Scenes with an External Control. If you have any questions for me on Live Loops or music, music licensing, life, poetry, what have you, go ahead and hit me up. Eddie Gray. Triggering Scenes with an External Control. So now we're going to play the Logic Remote app. And one thing you'll find with this incredible app is that you can actually trigger the scenes via an external controller. Now, you can also use a MIDI controller, a keyboard if you want. It's up to you. I just happen to like the, the graphics and the workflow with the iPad, and so I highly suggest that you check that out. You can also utilize your phone if need be. So two things worth mentioning, you can connect via a lightning cable or just make sure that your Wi-Fi is set up to the iPad that's connected with your phone. Then 
go into the Bible of this period inside here and then start triggering away. I'm going to keep moving using the arrows anyway. And you know, turn. Because I could always use my mouse, but it's just kind of janky. the entire scene and then I'm using the arrow keys to move it to different individual cells and then I trigger them using the return key. For example, I'm triggering this entire scene. I'm going to lower the volume and then look at how I move it. And I'm going to trigger this one cell. So now this entire scene is playing here, but from track number one, this specific cell is playing all together. Take a listen. Okay, Roger that. So hopefully you guys um, enjoyed that. Again, uh, the 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 link is inside of the of the chat. If you want to check out that course, you can go to the Graphy app, and we will meet you there. All right, so let's get back to our lesson, our our uh, live loop session. Now, if you guys might have remembered, we were actually working on a track. It was like a kind of rock and roll, Foo Fighters. Uh, you know, alternative rock, hard rock kind of session. And I found that um, that when I moved everything over, everything came together really nicely. So let me just play you what I have thus far, and then we'll go over exactly what's going on in terms of uh, the live loop script and how I transferred everything over. All right, here we go.
Okay, so it's uh, really surprising that we were able to come up with that that pretty solid idea. Now these drums here, I, I just want to you know make sure you understand that this is just something I pulled up from Drummer, like literally just created a new track, chose Drummer, chose Rock, and then that's what we ended up with. Now something I want to say about drums, if you really want to get them right, team, it's super important. Um, if you've been following my work, you know that I do all kinds of music. I'm in music licensing. I'm a composer for television now, and we'll see what else later. But essentially, there are some, some universal truths at work with various types of music. When it comes to drums, if you compress them the right way, if you know how to handle a compressor, then what ends up happening is that they sound a lot more authentic and uh, up front in the mix. So here's without compression, check this out. Now, bear in mind, there's two kinds of compressions on here. I'm using actual compression on the track, and then I'm also using parallel compression on the bus. So here's with the actual compression on the track. So you want to make something really magical, really pop, use this parallel compression. So without it, it sounds like this. You see how quiet, how feeble, how small, how narrow it sounds? All of a sudden, all we got to do is turn this puppy on and then we got. Now there's a lot of compressors you can use. This is called an FET, a field effect transistor compressor, known for its fast attack, um, just super sharp compression. And so this is really good if you want to make something, uh, you know, really slap. Another one that I would recommend uh, that I've been playing with lately is Get Good Drums. They have a nice compressor called Smash and Grab. It's right here. And I'll tell you, it really makes a difference. They basically have two versions. I believe this is the VCA and then they have, um, oh, I'm sorry, right here. Then they have, yeah, this is the VCA, I believe, and then this one is like the uh, the FET or uh, one or the other, but basically it makes everything sounds banana. So check this out. Let me go ahead and just start compressing this. All right, good. And then I'll go ahead and add some saturation. All right, and this should sound a lot better. Let me do um, in parallel. You can see here that it says, hey, how do you want to treat this? Do you want it to be the, the overheads, the room, the toms? And so this sounds a lot better just with this simple processing. Check it out. So again, without this kind of processing, and with. Okay, so that's where I'll start in terms of um, creating a believable, authentic drummer. So you guys might have remember we were recording these guitars and we were having some issues because you know the guitars, um, you know, they were supposed to come in kind of on the upbeat. And so I finally kind of figured out how to line all of this up. You can see that my regions don't actually start on the one; they start on the upbeat of four so on four and and then when we come down on the grid or or uh, beat one bar one then we actually play the song so let's just take a listen to that really quick Okay, so the overall vibe that I was looking for was like, you know, Foo Fighters, Taylor Hawkins, and I was trying to figure out how we can really get in there. Now, without having to think about the kit and how to make, uh, you know, all of those uh, constituents really work, I really was thinking about like the performance and how do we kind of really lock in the way that this this guy plays, right? Because he's got a very unique style, uh, which I'm sure he copied from and emulated from his heroes and kind of turned it into his own. So this is kind of what I want to spend some time talking about, but I want you to be aware that we actually started this inside of the live loops grid. And I was able to come up with some ideas that really uh, worked out in, in a kind of really positive way. For example, remember we uh, started playing with that noise at some point and I ended up coming out with some pretty cool stuff here. Check this out. 
So that was me just scratching, creating a live loop right there. And then here I came up with that loop that we were just cycling over and over again. Listen to this. So again, it was just going over and over again. Here's a loop, uh, maybe another scratch. So all together we get this. Okay, so before we start programming these drums, again, I got to bounce in like 20 minutes. So if you have any questions, please hit me up. If you're enjoying the content, uh, go ahead and show me some love. Thank you guys. All right, so um, the very first thing to address is what's called tonal balance. So I want to look at that. Isotope has this incredible suite of plugins and uh, in the entire suite, they have something called tonal balance control. They, they've just come out with their second iteration a couple of months ago. And here's what it basically does. It allows you to see the entire EQ curve or the frequency balance from 20 hertz all the way up to 20K. And why this is you know, specifically important is because if you're trying to capture the sound of a band, of a group, of a drummer, of a guitarist, you want to understand where they sit in terms of frequency, in terms of dynamics, and in terms of width or stereo image. So, that being the case, I took a song by clicking here on this menu and I created a tonal balance control target from an audio file. Now, I can't play these files. I've, I've learned my lessons uh, when it comes to, you know, YouTube copyright and stuff like that. So, I'm not going to play the actual file, but the, the, the file that I was uh, referring to was... Um, this song from the color and the shape from the Foo Fighters. So I basically selected that and then Isotope went ahead and created a EQ curve for me. Now there's one thing that we should pay attention to before we start playing this so you can see if I'm, if I'm hitting this on the mark or not. And that is what's called the crest factor inside of the tonal balance control. Now what this means is, is the signal, the song, too compressed in relation to the original or is it not compressed enough. Now, I don't know about you guys, but you know, I'm the kind of guy that needs reminders. That's just how I work. Like, uh, there's so many different things going on and you know, we're, we're learning so many different facets of the game. Like, you know, right now, I'm, you know, I'm learning a lot about and teaching a lot about, you know, a vocal production and, and recording guitars, um, and how to just get like a full polished sound when it comes to audio. Right. So that being the case, you know, how is it that um, I can systematize my workflow so I can always remember the information that I need to remember. It doesn't matter if you know everything, you just need to know the stuff that moves your career, your music, your business, and your collaborations forward, right? So that being the case, let me show you a good system that I've been able to work out the last couple of years where I actually use the user preset menu as a way to remember stuff. So I'll literally save as a user preset and I'll just start dictating some language. So like here, if I zoom in, you can see it says, if the crest factor is all the way to the left, it means that it's too dynamic in comparison to the original. In contrast, if it's all the way to the right, then it's too compressed. So we're gonna look at this. And again, I'm not selecting this. This is just a verbal reminder. Now you could do that inside of your operating software, have it inside of the downloads folder and create a system in that way. Maybe you open up an Evernote account or something like that. That is on you. But I just find this seems to work for me because it's plugin dependent. So that being said, let me play this and then we will talk about the Crest Factor. Right on the money, folks. You got to love it. You got to love it. So that's the one thing. Now look at the EQ curve. I am almost exactly where I need to be in terms of the... Oh, okay, now we lost the settings there. But here are the EQ settings. And Isotope is basically saying, look, if you can hit this EQ curve or this EQ setting, then you are in the ballpark of the Foo Fighters. So then... Rather than looking at this from a broad point of view, let's look at fine. Okay, and let's see where we are here. 
Guys, I'm pretty close. You can see that maybe I need to work on my mids. But besides that, we're definitely in the bag. Let's, let's see that one more time. All right, so I'm going to work on my mids and I'm going to bring down the highs a little bit. Roger that. So in order to do this, you can use any EQ plugin. I find the mag EQ to be the easiest in terms of just workflow. So I'm going to go into EQ inside of my plugin folder and I'm going to look for mag. Do I have it in here? Oh, no, I have it under mastering. Here we go. Uh, I thought I had it in here. <laughs> Hold on. It's uh, geez, so many plugins. I'm actually going through a process of, of purging a lot of these and cleaning these out. Here, I'm going to use a speaker food plugin to, to get me across the finish line here. So mag EQ4. Yep, that's the one. Uh, yeah, this is a third party plug in there where you can search for plugins inside of your DAW. Okay, cool. I inside of Logic to be specific. All right, so we can see that my low mids need some help. So, uh, where exactly is this? I mean, I'm guessing, you know, anywhere between like, you know, three, four hundred and one thousand, two thousand. I don't know. We're going to have to try it out. Uh, but basically, I'm going to use this small little EQ here to uh, provide. Uh, what I need. So um, this is 160. This is 650. So I'm probably going to raise this red knob, uh, this this bell filter, and then maybe even here a little bit on 2K. But let's see how it goes. Man, right on the money. Look at that. <laughs> that, was, that was easy. Um, so here, here's what um, what I'm trying to say here is you start coming up with systems and then you start finding the right tools for the right job. So, I, you know, I've done this a couple of times. I've been around. And so uh, I know that when I want to make these these EQ adjustments, I'll use a shelving EQ um, just, just like this one. And it just kind of lends itself well to this procedure. We're talking in terms of procedures. We're talking about acting and conducting yourself like a consummate professional top to bottom. Right. I've got uh, a client next month who's paying me to go out to his house and bring in my assistant. We're not going to walk in there unprepared. In fact, I've prepared a month in advance for everything so that when we get to the, you know, the, uh, the site, when we get, when we get, you know, ready to work, everything has already been accounted for and taken care of. I've got a backup of a backup. Um, you know, I've got all the dry stems, all the wet stems, all the original stems. We can tackle anything that happens. I'm going to have my laptop in case I need uh, my assistant to be comping vocals while I'm tracking vocals. You understand? You got to have systems in place. I just got signed to a 10 song publishing deal with one of the biggest publishers in the game right now. And I got to have a system in place. All right. So make sure you design systems so that you can move forward readily and with confidence. That's the goal. You got to really believe in yourself. You got to really make sure that you're the one that dictates how it goes. OK, so um, that looks pretty good. Now, it's just a matter of getting the, the, the high end up here like this looks like. 8, 10K. I'm going to try and reduce this high shelf and see if it helps. It may not, but we're going to try it. Let's go. So hey, I'm pretty happy with that. Here's before. All right, cool. We'll leave it at that. So hopefully you understand my point. Now we're a little bit closer to the EQ curve from the Foo Fighters, right? Without having to play back their song. Now there are various ways you can do this. You can use reference by mastering the mix as well. Uh, but I find this one to just be an interesting tool for sure in that you get the crest factor as well. All right. So happy with that. Um, let's go into programming drums for the next couple minutes. Now here is what I'm proposing. I'm going to set up my screen here. Hold on. All right. Rather than just start 
plugging away or using uh you know technology to get you there which i'm all about you guys know if you if you're watching the channel um you got to find a hack right this is this is almost like another component from the uh you know the modern creative it's not just that you need to learn how to play a violin or whatever it's how do you program a violin if you need to you know, I write music and in, in tension and, in, uh, you know, ballads, uh, you know, EDM, trap. How can you hack it so that you can get paid, so you can move forward, so you can buy yourself some wonderful gear, so you can take care of your family, so you can move the ball forward? That's what we're, we're talking about here. So what I'm going to do, and hopefully, uh, I don't get in trouble for this, but I'm going to go into YouTube and we're going to look at uh, Taylor Hawkins' play just for a quick second. Hopefully, again, this uh, this is all good. It should work out. Um, let's see how it goes. This will be my first time trying this. So, uh, let me see. Let me press play on this because uh, I don't want to get an advertisement, and we'll go from there. So, what I'm proposing here is that when you okay, here it is. Cool. Oops. Wait. My bad. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Yeah, it's right here. So when you start to copy and emulate that you, you you look at them and you and you look at their inclinations and their playing styles and if they're playing ahead of the beat or behind the beat and if it's you know in the genre of hip hop listen to the songs try and watch them work and see how they program their beats are they using a machine are they using an mpc um is it something that they're doing you know with with splice or, or you know figure out what the workflow is and try and emulate what it is that they're up to now it's not enough again just to be them and copy them you're gonna have to kind of figure out how to do it your own way but at least it's a start it's a way to get you there so go, let's go ahead and check out this video and i think it'll be helpful in terms of you know seeing how this guy plays all right let's check it out So this is good right here, right? Because you're getting some information that you could, you know, potentially use. Think about this is how they're miking the drums. This is what they're using for this. They're using a very common mic named the SM57 for the snare, right? Start gathering some data. All right, cool. And then again, uh, you can watch the rest of that. But what I'm looking for here is what exactly is this gentleman doing and how is he playing? Well, if you listen to the way he plays, he's kind of playing behind the beat a little bit. And so we're going to take that into consideration when we're writing these drum parts. Uh, here, let's just go a little bit more. Hold on. And also, the guy, the guy is just slamming these drums, right? Just crushing the drums. So, again, I used a self-generative pattern inside of Drummer. Uh, let me go ahead and delete this out here. Okay. And um, something that we're going to do is uh, use Drummer. Hold on. Why did that mute? Hold on. Why did that mute? <laughs> hold on what is going on boom 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 that's on i see it's on there's something going on here hold on oh jeez. this just completely dimmed out on me why troubleshooting time all right so let me take you through my thought process here of how i usually work this out so the region is grayed out, but um, it doesn't have a little dot in here. Let me show you what I mean. Do you see how this region is muted because it has that little dot? This one doesn't have that. So I'm not exactly sure why it's muted. We're going to look at the track header and we're going to see, is there something on that's not on maybe like protect or something here? No, everything looks fine in that way. 
So maybe I'll hit Control M. Nope, that's certainly not it. Not sure what happened. Well, okay, maybe then I'll just have to show you from scratch. Then how about we just uh, we just improvise? All right, cool. So then um, you can see I'm going to drag this over. All right, and then I'll take the uh, parallel processing settings inside that I used on the last track. All right, and here let's get rid of this guy. And you know what? Let me take, let me copy from this guy. Okay, cool. Because uh, I got an ending right there that I'm going to utilize in a second here. Um, okay, so then what I'm going to tell this drummer is, hey, can you follow one of the tracks that I'm currently using in the tracks area? Why do you want to do this? Well, the reason you want to do this is so that it follows the pattern. And we talked a little bit about that last time as well. So I'm just going to tell it to follow, let's see. Um, uh, these are both labeled the same, so uh, let me go up here and then label this one just a little bit differently. So I'll say this one, right? And so then we're back in Drummer, and I'm going to go ahead and have it follow this one. All right, so then now Logic is analyzing the transients inside of that specific guitar track, and we get this. Okay, so this is very similar to how this guy would start, you know, breaking apart these drums, right? Let me close the library inspector. Actually, we'll keep the inspector open. And um, maybe this is a little too hard, though. Let's check it out. Yeah, I'd say so. So I'm going to back off the parallel compression. Okay, I like that a lot. And then again, in my opinion... Uh, the way I was listening to Taylor Hawkins play, he kind of plays a little bit behind the beat. Now, of course, that could have been just in that one song, right? So let's listen to this. Rather than the beat pushing ahead, and rather than him kind of like, you know, urging the the drums forward and kind of pushing them ahead of the beat, we're going to make sure that it's not lackadaisical, not, by, you know, completely like, you know, uh, reggae or something or jazz, but, but, you know, it's not going to play like completely on the grid. Now let's see what that does. So here's the way it would normally play. Now, if I pull the feel back a little bit, it's going to move the transients over. So to me, this is kind of a, um, a big characteristic of the way that this drummer uh, does what he does. Check it out. Now that's going to feel a lot different. Go ahead and study it, do your own research. Don't let me be the one to dictate how this goes for you, but these are just my findings and, and they're working for me right now. All right, so that being said, I like that a lot. And now here's the second part of this. Um, let's make sure that this is a satisfactory transition. Mm, I don't like that fill, I gotta be honest. So um, I'm gonna click here and I'm gonna, um, take off the fills. And so then now you'll get just like a straightforward. Um, okay, so that's cool. Uh, let me go ahead and hit Command D to duplicate this. So these have now the same properties. And then here's what I wanna talk about. Um, in fact, let me just see if I could find another decent fill. Uh, hold on. Now that sounds cheesy, hold on. Uh, nah, that's not the way he would do a fill. Um, too complex. I actually don't mind the fill, but uh, it seems like it's not something he would do from the outset. Okay, so here's the deal. Here's what we're looking for. I'm going to control click, go to convert to MIDI region. Now, the way that this gentleman plays is in such a way where he is locked and loaded every single time for that snare. I mean, it's the same velocity every single time. So I'm going to raise that up. Let's just bring it to 127 and just see what this sounds like. All right. So that should not change at all. Maybe when you're doing the drum fills, but overall, keep it the same. Okay, I like that a lot. And so then now, it's probably not a bad idea to do the same thing with the kick. I'm gonna hold option, okay? And then I'm gonna make these uniform, check it out. Let 
Now, we're not going to do that with the hi-hats per se, but what I will do with the hi-hats is I'm going to affect them a little bit differently. So right now, I'm using a drummer. If I want to use what's called a producer kit, this is going to allow me to treat the hi-hats individually. Right here, we're kind of subject to the drum kit and all its uh, you know, basic components inside of the, the GUI or the plugin. But what if you want to do more, you know, compress the hi-hats or what have you? Then you're going to have to access these producer kits inside of Logic Pro. So we're going to go SoCal. All right, then I'll go ahead and open up the track stack. And uh, let's go to hi-hats here. And then I'm also going to use parallel compression that I used before on the hi-hats. Let's listen to this. Looks, looks like it took out the initial parallel processing from this track. All right, good. And so one more perspective real quick is, let's think about this. Right now, the hi-hats are on the right-hand side, right? And so if a drummer, if we were looking at a drummer on stage, this would be kind of the, the perspective of, of the fan, right? Is that you're watching him play and the hi-hat is playing kind of from the right side because he's right-handed. And so it's all just perspective. But really, if he was playing, he would be hearing it from the drummer's perspective which is the left ear and so there's that to consider too is you know what's the position of the hi-hat let me just move this over to the left and let's check this out okay so I'll leave that up to you as well. And so this fill, that's not generally a fill that I feel that he would do. So let's listen to this. Okay, so they just kind of threw in a random fill somewhere here at the end. Hold on. Where's that snare? I can't find how it stutters like that. Hold on. Oh, maybe it's on this other region. Let's see. Oh, yeah, maybe it's that one right there. God. That one right there. Let's take that out. I don't, I don't see him doing that. You know what I'll do? I'll do a flam here. So I'm going to take this one. Let me get a little bit tighter here. And then I'll move this over so that these play kind of back to back like this. And we should get a nice flam sound. Let's listen to this. Uh, hold on. Yeah, so that sounds a little bit more like a Taylor Hawkins fill. I might stop the hi-hat. Hold on. Um, I don't know, maybe we'll stop. Okay, and then what about the kick? Yeah, why not? Yeah, and another thing is, you know, don't be afraid to literally kind of play... Uh, you know, with your hands and kind of just, you know, play the action out the way that that drummer would usually, you know, um, use his arms and his, the body language, trying to emulate the body language. Um, if you ever watch this guy, you know, play fills, you know that um, he's really kind of keen on very clean fills. And they're not necessarily the most complex per se, at least not all the time. The guy's an absolute beast. He could drum solo for like, you know, 80 years. But um I'm just saying that like usually they're pretty simple fills and so it's not a bad study it's not a bad way to analyze music is to listen to a record side by side as you're composing right this is what can make the difference in your craft it just takes one two good hours for to completely change your perspective on a style of music on production as a whole vocal production whatever the case may be stay committed to the craft and that's kind of the message for today i wish i could spend more time with you guys but again i got this client coming in and uh i just want to make sure that that i honor um that so uh let's uh let's call it for now there was so much more that i wanted to cover um you know just just stay in the craft guys um, it will slowly start to come to you. And then one day you'll wake up 
and you'll just be a better producer. You know, you'll just be better than your friends or, and not that it's a competition or whatever, but you know, it's good for you to, to look back and realize that maybe you passed somebody, you know, um, like when you first started, maybe you and a friend or you and, um, you know, some coworkers or something started together, but then you, you stayed disciplined, you stayed on task, you stayed committed, you kept the sacrifices going. And then one day you just woke up and you were just better. Right. And, um, so long as you continue to get better and so long as you stay committed to the craft that is music production, music composition, technology as a whole, then that will keep you going. Now, on the days where you don't feel like it, the days where you're getting tired, you got too many problems, or you, you just don't have the energy, do me a favor. Remember why you're doing this and how long you've been doing it. And if you've committed any longer than like six months or a year of your life, it's not time to give up now. All right. Have a good community, surround yourself around good people, and that will keep you in the game. All right, guys, look, I'm going to get out of here. I got a client. Take good care of yourselves. Check out Learning Live Loops uh, with Eddie Gray on the Graphy app. Uh, if you're liking the content, subscribe, and I will make a ton more. I got a lot more to give. I got a lot more energy. And uh, man, I've been here since early and we're still getting it in. So um, without further ado, thank you guys very much for your time. If you want more information, if you're interested in the channel and you just want some 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 more resources, uh, free course, go ahead and email support at hfmusicacademy.com. Stay tuned. I got a lot of great things coming for you. Stay up, stay positive, and stay committed to the craft. I'm out of here. See ya.